Well, welcome to PHP for HTML gurus. And this is primarily for people who know HTML, CSS, um, but aren't PHP programmers. Um, so just so, well, my name is Andy Tower. I must well introduce myself first. And um, I've been programming for <clears throat> over 30 years now. <laughs> And I'm not any taller now than I was then. <laughs> um, and I've been working in the, the web field um, for probably about 13 years, kind of on and off. Um, and um, uh, OK. So that's basically who I am. Let's just leave it at that. And what I'd like to know first is um, how much experience have people here with PHP? So is there anybody here who considers themselves a PHP programmer or who has written PHP programs? OK, I got a couple. Um, I probably won't be teaching you anything you don't know already. Um, but you can see sort of the kinds of things that, that end up being important to, to people who are doing kind of the layouts. Who here um, has done template overrides or alternate layouts? So you've been in and you've seen some of that PHP that's in those, those files. And who has kind of made little tweaks to them, maybe added something or moved them around? And we've got some. OK. Um, and is there anybody here who doesn't know HTML or CSS? OK, good. Um, so the second thing I just wanted to mention is that I actually wrote a book on HTML, I'm sorry, on PHP and MySQL, like this. And I have 10 copies to give away at the end of this session. So if you're interested in one of them, um, as we get to the end, just I'll collect um, either a, um, a, a business card or just put your name or something on a piece of paper, and I'll just draw 10 people, and you guys can have a copy of it. If you want to just pass it around, or? Oh, I thought you yeah, was going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. And that'll, that'll tell a lot more than what I can do, obviously, in 45 minutes. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go over the basics of PHP, and then I'm going to go through kind of an explanation um, using actual code. And I'm going to be using just a, mod a module layout for it because it's very simple. And we'll be um, then taking that and changing the code in there and actually see it change up above. And if we have more time after that, uh, I'll go into um, some of the other layouts. And we can kind of go down through it and see what's going on. Um, so, OK. And feel free to ask me questions if anything comes up that isn't, isn't clear. And like I said, I'm going to go fairly fast um, because there's not a lot of time, but I don't want to leave anybody behind. And some of this will make more sense when you actually see it in practice, or you may have seen some of it. But the first thing you need to know is how to get in and out of PHP. Because when you're doing this in the kind of things that you'll normally be doing, you're doing it where you do some HTML and some PHP. So you've undoubtedly seen this before, this little um, tag where you go into PHP and then you end it with the, um, the question mark and the greater than sign. You'll see it sometimes without the PHP, but you don't really want to do that way because that's a shortcut. and it it won't work on all of the servers. Um, 
Then another little thing is just that you want to end each statement with a semicolon. Okay? So we go into PHP. We're going to assign um, Andrea to this first name and Tar to the last name. And that's all we've done in there. And then we end and get out of it. White space is irrelevant. In other words, you can take it and you can have a lot of white spaces and it won't matter. You can, you can go on to a second line. You see I put this all in one line. It doesn't matter whether I go to um, the next line or I leave a tab or whatever. That's pretty irrelevant. And you've come across that, I think, in HTML as well. You will, this won't matter as much to you, but just in case you come across it, you don't need to get out of PHP if the last thing you're doing in a file is PHP. So you may come across some files where they're just leaving that last tag off, and that's fine. Um, I won't go into the technical reasons why that's done right now. They have two kinds of comments for PHP. One is a single line comment where you just use the double slash, and then you put your comment, and as soon as you go to a new line, you're not in a comment anymore. So if you want to do multiple um, line comments using the slash, you just start the next line with a double slash. You can also use multiple line comments with the same type of commenting that you use for CSS, where you use the slash and the asterisk to start it, and then the asterisk slash to end it. All right, now we come into some of the stuff that's a little bit different. Um, variables. What variables are, are kind of containers that are going to hold values and information that can, can change. You can usually recognize them because they start with a dollar sign. And you assign a value with an equal sign. You can use, if you're in text, you can use either a single quote or a double quote. And for the most part, you can pick whichever one you want, except if you are enclosing some type of a quote within a quote. So in other words, if, you're, um, if you already have a single quote in something, like it's IT apostrophe S, then you'd want to use double quotes around it so that, that you use the opposite kind of quote to go around it. Um, or you could do it the other way with the single quotes around if you have a double quote within it. There are some differences between whether you do a single quote and a double quote, and you don't need to worry too much about it unless something starts going weird with, your, with what's going on. But basically what it is is that if you have a variable inside a double quote, instead of using the variable, it's going to use the value inside the variable. Whereas if you've got the single quote, it's just going to do what you actually printed right there. And um, if you want to, a lot of what you're going to be doing, you do in PHP, is you might be assigning a value to it, might be doing something with it. But if you actually want to use that kind of value, like you want to display it as part of your HTML, or like you want to have a variable that is the name of the a CSS file that you want to use so that you're putting the inform that information inside a variable um, to show the name. If you actually want that to show rather than just doing something, you need to say echo. So that's what will actually display it and let you um, put it as text on something. And then if you need to have something that is joined together, you're going to concatenate two things, you use a period to do it. So in this example, I, you've just got the first name and you've got the last name. And you see this is a variable with your little dollar sign. And so you take the first name and you add the, the dot so you're concatenating it. And even though there's a space here in this particular case, it's not going to use that space. So I then concatenate a space and then concatenate again with the dot to the last name to get the Andrea space tar. And as I said before, the white space doesn't matter, so these dots could actually be right up next to the variable name, and then could be right up next to these quotes. 
There are different variable types. Um, the ones we were just using here were, were string text. You've also got numbers, like a 42. Um, you can have logical things, which would be true and false. One and zero are also true and false. Um, you can have an array, which is kind of like a, a list. And there are two kinds of arrays. One is what they call an index array. And that would be, you know, let's say you're, you're in Word or something and you're, you're making a list and you have a, a, an ordered list with the numbers. Um, how you'd know which element in the array you're using is by the number that's attached to it. The only thing that's weird about it is it doesn't start with a one, it starts with a zero. So your second element would actually be index one. And then there's a second kind of array which uses um, a name instead of a number to get it. And so that if you had, um, let's say it was a list of contact information that happened to be in an array, you could have the first element be called name, and the second element be called street, and the third element be called country, and the fourth element be called phone if you wanted to. And then rather than caring whether the country is the third element in there, so therefore you would use an index two, you would, could just get to it by addressing it by country. And then there are also objects, which I'll get to in a minute. So those, you can think of these as being like, kind of like the nouns of what you're doing because they're giving you certain information. And functions, you can think of like they're verbs, that these are what are going to actually be doing actions. And you can recognize them because they have these parentheses. Um, and they also don't have a dollar sign. So that you can see here we have the variable with the full name where we've put in this Andrea Tar with all this extra white space. And then we've got this echo because we want to print this out. And we're saying trim and fairly obvious what trim is going to do. It's going to get rid of the extraneous white space. And within that, within these parentheses, we've put that variable. And that's a way that we can pass the information that's in that variable to the function, and then it's going to do something to it and give you back the information in this particular case. So that what this trim function does is you pass it some information, it does something to it, and it gives it back. And what it's giving back is Andrea Tarr. Now, you can also nest these, as you can see from this example. So we can take that particular thing. So we've trimmed it, we have this, but then we've done this other function, which is string to upper. So what it's doing is it's taking the string and it's translating them all to uppercase, which gives you the Andrea Tarr all in uppercase. So that's how you can kind of, you can nest these kind of things and use them in different ways. Now, in addition to variables and functions, we also have constants. You'll see these around occasionally. In fact, you'll see them in every single file uh, on the system. And that's when, at the beginning of every one, you've got that defined J execute or die. That J execute, which is all in all, actually, it's underscore J execute, um, is in all caps, which is just a convention that you put constants in all caps. You could do it in small letters, um, but it's, it's more conventional to do it this way so that you can recognize easily as to what it, what it is. You'll also notice that there is no dollar sign in front of it. And all you have to do to make one is you have it as a define, and you'll see it, it's like, it's kind of like that function here. Here's your define. You're going to give it multiple pieces of information here. This is what the name of the um, constant's going to be, and this is the value that's going to actually go into it. So then if you want to use it, you would just do it like you did the variable. In this particular case, we're just going to print out what the name of the site is. Now, I told you a minute ago that I was going to talk about objects. and. You can do a whole class on just what objects are. But um, 
as a very quick and easy way to kind of think of what they are, you can think of them as a group, like an, um, sort of like a list like a, 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 of, or a named array of just a list of um, particular information and variables plus a group of functions. So an example here would be that if you have item and then you've got this arrow going to title, that's how you would define the, um, the variable here or the property that is within the class that is stored within this item. So if you want to access the title, like that named array I was mentioning, you would just go the dollar item arrow title, and it'll give you what is stored in that property under the title. Do the same thing with the intro text. And then if you, you can have a function, is the same way. Here, this here is the property. You have the arrow, um, and you're going to have a function within there, which can also be called a method. And so you, that's called get, and here is the information that you're sending to it. Now, classes are sort of like the blueprint of what a, um, an object is, so that when an object is created, you know, I mentioned it has all of these, um, like that named array kind of thing, which uh, we really call, we can call properties and it'll have the different functions or, or functions or methods within it. And to know what is actually there, um, a class is set up which contains that information. And you can actually use that class itself without creating a whole object. And this is a little sort of a technical thing you don't have to worry about too much except that you're gonna be seeing it in the code, so I wanted to show it to you. And rather than an arrow, if you are defining a class instead of a, an object, like dollar parameters is an object and uses the arrow, this does not have, the class does not use a dollar sign, and it uses this double colon in or, instead of an arrow. So in this particular case, if you're using the, the J text, it's passing it this information which is the, like the language key that's going to be used. And within the function in there, it's going to go out and find the proper file to look up that number and pass back the actual string that you would use for that. And it's the same where if you use the JHTML with these double colons, you pass it the string truncate, which is going to truncate a string. And what is it going to truncate? It's going to truncate the title in this object. And how much is it going to truncate and where is it going to go is coming from this object parameters from the read more limit. Does that make some sense? Okay. So the other thing you need to know besides being able to, to you know, use variables to pass certain information or functions to be doing things is you need to be making decisions a lot. And one of the main kind of decisions you're going to be making are using the if statements. And it's, it's fairly um, simple here. You have the if, and then in parentheses, you have a condition, which in this case, I'm just using what dollar sign is greater than 10. So if dollar sign is greater than 10, then we're going to do something. If it's not greater than 10, we have this else statement, and then we're going to do something else. And at the end, we end with the end if. Another example is you don't need to have that else. You could just say, if errors, and you'll see this isn't comparing to anything. It's just kind of there. And if, if all, you ha all you have to worry about is what does, does this um, uh, evaluate to a true statement or a false statement? And in PHP, it'll evaluate to a true statement if it's not zero or blank. So this has actually got something in it. Let's say, let's say if there are errors, you've got three, four, one, five, it doesn't matter. That means that you've got something in there. And so in that case, 
you're going to only do something if there are errors. And if there aren't errors, you're not doing anything else because you're only going to do this if there are errors and you're not going to try to do anything else if they're not. You can also nest the if statements as well so that you could do if it's this, do this, else if it's this, do this, else if it's this, do that kind of thing. There are a number of comparison operators that you can use on here. Um, and it's pretty much just what you're used to in math. The only thing that's a little bit different are these first couple ones. If you want to say something is equal to something else, you know, if dollar sum is equal to five, don't use equal. Because equal is an assignment rather than a comparison. So it would set five, it would put, actually take five and put it into dollar sum. And your statement would always be true because it's, um, you've taken five and put it into dollar sum, so dollar sum is going to be greater than one, or I mean, it's going to be greater than zero. If you did dollar sum equals zero, your statement's always going to be false because that comes into a false statement. So if you want to actually do a comparison in there, you do equal, equal. If you want to make sure, you may see sometimes where you've got the three equals, and that's where it's making sure that you've got the same type of information. So you'll notice, you'll remember when I was showing you the different kinds of variables, you had string and you had um, numeric variables and numbers, so that you'd also have to make sure that when you're comparing it, and if you really want it to be equal, that has to match as well. So if you see three equals in what you're doing, you can just kind of think of that as it's got to really be equal. Um, and then the dollars, or the um, exclamation mark is a not, so that it makes it the negative. One other thing that you're going to see in that code is um, what you can kind of call a, a one-line if statement. It's got a fancier name, but I won't bother um, getting into that. And so this would be the normal way. You know, if the gender is equal, notice those double, um, double equal signs, it's equal to N, M, then it's a man, else it's going to be a woman. If you want to do a one-line version of it, um, and see here, I'm just echoing and doing that. In this case, I would echo. In the parentheses, I would do the, co the condition, the comparison, and then I have a question mark. And whatever is true comes first, and then after a colon is whatever the false statement is. And you'll see this a lot in some of the layouts because it's a short way to just do a yes-no kind of thing um, where you've just got the two options. I've been showing you the if statements here using this colon and then the else and then the end if because that's the standard practice that we use in Joomla for when we are going in and out of HTML. The normal syntax that's used in PHP is rather to use these curly braces to put around whatever the statements are that are inside. Um, and the reason we tend to use this is that when we go in and out of it, in and out of PHP and um, HTML, these get lost a lot, and it's hard to track. Also, if you're doing other things besides if, I'll get into looping in a minute. Actually, looping in a minute. Oops. I went too many. Um, when you get into looping and you've got some big looping thing here and then you've got some if statements and maybe something else here, you can get very confusing as to what kind of end quote is going to match with what, what else. So if you've actually got something that says end if or end while or end do, then you, can, you know which are it's supposed to be attaching to which and it makes it a lot easier to, to keep track of it. So looping is the next thing and that's when you want to repeat and do things multiple times. Um, and just some of the ones that you'll see is you'll see while or do while, um, for, for each, we'll go over a bit here. That's really, you'll see that a lot in the layouts because that actually loops, loops through arrays or objects um, which are lists of certain things and will do the same thing each time to whatever is in that um, array or object. So it just iterates automatically through it and you don't have to do a lot of extra code to tell it when to start and 
do counters and tell it when to end. It'll just do that automatically for you. So you'll see a lot of that. And there are ways that you can jump out early, either just jump to the next iteration of the loop or completely jump out of um, the whole thing. So that's kind of the, the bare basics on, on how PHP works. And what I wanted to do now is actually go through the index.php file on a couple of the common things that you see there and sort of show you how that, how that works within it. So the first one is the, the template parameters. So what we have, we have here, you're recognizing that we've got these variables. And the way that we want to see what this color is for this template. So we're going to use the dollar this parameters get template color. This dollar this we haven't really talked about yet. And what that is, is um, remember we, we had the, this, the objects I was telling you about? When you're actually within one of those objects and you want to refer to something else, let's say you, you want to refer to another um, function that's within that object, or you want to refer to um, one of the other um, class variables that's within that object, you'll use this, you know. I'm in this um, object, so that's what I want to get. And so what we want to do here is we want, we're going to use within this object that I'm currently in, um, we want to go to the parameters and we're going to be getting this template color and then we're going to be putting it in to color. So now that we've got color in here, we can go into our, our link statement and you'll see here's where we're going to jump into PHP under this href and we have to echo out this base URL. So this is, this is just a, a, a variable, a property that, that where we know what it is. And then we are going to jump out of PHP again. We'll be using, um, this is just straight HTML now, so we'll just use the slash template slash. Jump back into PHP to say which template we have. Again, this is another um, property or variable that's part of that, this object. And jump back out again for the rest of the thing that we already know hard-coded. Jump out, and we're going to be putting in what this color is. Now you'll notice that here, we're, we've put this HTML special chars in front of it. Because this is coming in off of a parameter, we're not necessarily sure whether that's coming from, and we don't want that to get intercepted and have something bad in there. So by putting this function around color, we're making it safe, because we would actually, if there was further HTML, um, entities in there, it would actually turn it into the actual entities as opposed to um, being able to process HTML within that. So what this ultimately comes up to is this statement is what it would end up um, resolving to. Then the next thing in the, that you come across in this uh, template, uh, index.php, are conditional statements. I had talked about conditional statements before, and you can see in this how you can put the if statement at the top and then actually jump out of it and go into your HTML and then come back into it at the end. So here we're just checking to see if the direction is equal again, double quote, or double equal signs, is equal to um, right to left. And in that case, we'll do this spreadsheet, which is the template right to left CSS. But we wouldn't be doing it if it's not right to left. So that's one of the instances where we'd be doing an if statement like that. And then the next thing that they're using is conditional positions. And this is one that I'm sure some of you have used, who, how many of you have used this count module thing before? Yeah, that's one of the good ones. And so what it's actually doing, again, it's, it's doing this, this dollar sign um, this, so that it knows you're right within uh, this particular object. 
this is the function that it's doing. It's going out to get that position. And I guess just why, again, to point out that you're able to really jump in and out of the PHP just as easily as um, earlier we were showing it all within um, one beginning and ending tag. And here's where they're using the one line if statement that we had before. Um, now, first of all, what they're doing is we're going to set up what this what is in the variable, which is going to be, you know, to show the right column. And so the first thing we're going to do is we do a count module to see if there's anything in position three. And now what you can see that we're, we're doing here is we're actually saying or. And then we're doing it again, and then we're doing or and checking for this one. So what happens when you're using the ors is as soon as you get to one that it actually finds something in it, that's all it needs to know. And so if it, if it, counts, if it counts this, and we've got five of them in it, you know that you're putting something over into this one. If it's got the zeros and then an or, and zeros and or, and then zeros, it keeps looking until it actually finds something, and as soon as it does, that's what it's going to put over there. If it gets all the way through and it hasn't found anything, then this is going to end up being false. So that's how when you come down here and we're going to be doing this one line if statement, it's looking to see if there's anything in here. And remember that little question mark. So this is your true and this is your false. So if you've got something in show right column, then you want to have, um, this is putting it in the ID, then you'll end up with an ID of the content area too. And if there is, um, is nothing in that column, then you'll be doing content area. So what that'll then allow you to do, of course, is you'll have different IDs and you can go in your CSS and um, make different sizes for it there. Does that make sense? Okay. Very exciting stuff. <laughs> All right. So I just want to go on to this module layout. And I'm just going to use the, um, the latest articles. And this is the, the file that I'm going to use. Just taking it off of here, you can see that here is the latest articles. And what it's doing is it is showing you just the title for what's in there. So let's say you wanted to add something into that. Um, you wanted to show the intro text to put into there as well as the title. So you were going to do um, a template override to show that where you could get that additional information. So this is your, your layout file right here as to what it looks like. You come in, here's your constant. Remember I mentioned the constant? When we defined it, we just call it defined. And here it's called defined with a D to say we actually did it. So it's just checking to see if that has previously been defined. And if it has, you're fine. Otherwise, it's just going to die. And nothing is, this, it will not process anything. Just kill your program right there. And this is defined when um, Joomla is started as the first part of the process. So we come down here. And we go into, and this is just a simple unordered list. We're using the module class suffix to add directly right onto the um, class that we have here. And here's where you can see that it's, there's no space right here before we begin it. So that means that this is going to attach right to it so that it adds it as a suffix. And if you want to have it as a um, two classes, that's where you put the space before you put the suffix. Now, if for some reason you, that's not working at some point, it's always coming up as two, that's usually because somebody has left a space between here. Um, then we're going to go in and we're going to do this for each. And as I said before, the for each will iterate through a list of an array or an object and it will take each one of those and do something to it automatically. So in this particular case, dollar list 
is coming in by magic from someplace. Okay, that's just something you have, and it's got the stuff. And it is made up of a bunch of things that, and each time we do one of those things, we're just going to call it I dollar item. So that means when we come in here using dollar item, it's just taking one of these, and it just goes through and does one for each time. And you can see here what it's doing is it's just taking the dollar item link, and it's adding it to the href, and then displaying out the title and then ending our end for each. So what we want to do is we want to add something besides just the title to it. So what else can we add? What else might be in dollar item? The way that we're going to find out what's in there that you could do is you could use what's called a var dump. And I'm just tossing this in temporarily. And you'll notice I just go into PHP, I do a var dump. Now there's no echo because I don't want to display anything here. Var dump is going to go off and actually just do something unrelated to what I'm doing right here. So what a var dump does is it displays what's inside whatever variable you give it. And this is just like a little debugging temporary thing. You'd never want to do this where you'd leave it, it's just to find out what you've got right there. So if I run that, in addition to the regular stuff that's on my, my site, I end up getting everything that is in object dollar item. So those are all the different things that you could actually pick a piece of that and show it. Like right here, you can see how this says this is link. And it's a string, and it's actually giving you the information. If I go back to page one, you can see up here, here's your title. It's very hard to see. I'm sorry, it's little. And it's called first blog post. And let's say, and here's your title alias, and it's got nothing in there. OK, cute, as opposed to the alias. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Uh, here's your cat, cat ID. It's in the number 27, so that would just be the internal ID for it. Um, it's got, it was created by the answer to everything, number 42. And what we want to do is let's say we want to add intro text. You can see here's some of the intro text, our nice little lorem ipsum. So that's what we would have to actually call if we want to add the intro text. So we go back to this. I took out that var dump because we don't want to see it anymore. And I came down here and I just added this line where I'm saying, give me the dollar item to the intro text. So it'll show it there. And then, as you can see, here was your title. And here's the intro text on it. And here's your next title, and then showing the intro text. So that's how that would work. And that's a way that you can kind of find out what information you have available that you might be able to add in there. Any questions on that? Yeah. Um, is there one the, uh, higher than the bar dump meaning? Uh, uh, so it's going through the scope, but it's going to give you the properties, methods on that particular? It's whatever, whatever you're you're asking for. I, I put dollar item, so if instead, let's say, you were, um, let me bring it up here. Let's say I had taken this and I had moved this up right here, and then I'd put dollar list, then you'd see the list of all the different items that were in it. Okay? Is there a way to get a list of all the different objects that are available on that page? The only way that the, the easiest way to do that is to be actually running a debugger, which would do it interactively, you know, like if you're using um, an IDE like Eclipse or something like that with Xdebug, they'll usually have a list of your variables up there as to where you are at any one time, and you can start poking into those and seeing what that is. Here, here, here you would have to specifically ask for each one. Yeah, you'd have to ask for each one. So, um, 
Okay, so um, are there any, any other questions? Okay, it's, it's actually been 43 minutes. We have 45, <laughs> so I can go through, yep. Yes. So what are, the, what are you saying you can do? You can do a... Yep. The, the shortcut, okay. Yeah, you want to avoid shortcuts because they don't necessarily run all... Because um, you don't necessarily get... Um, it depends on, on, on how your, your um, host is set up. Sometimes things aren't activated. Um, yeah. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that you'll notice in this one, um, we're using dollar item and we're not using this. In your layouts, you'll tend to be, you, you may be coming with it directly with dollar item. And when we were in the index dot, PHP file, um, yeah, the index.php file, we had the this in front of it for things. And if you were to go and look at um, somewhere, you were going to come in and let's say you were looking at a component um, content views, article, template, default. Here you'll notice there are some things, like in this particular case, it was originally this item in parameters, and then they just shoved it into something that was a, just said parameters, um, so that it was less, shorter to use. Or you'll come across things when sometimes you'll have a this item, and sometimes you'll just have a dollar item. And there are very specific reasons why you've got it, because they're actually referring to different things. Um, so. When you're going in and you're making changes to, to that and you're kind of, you know, hunting and pecking, uh, what you want to do is just make sure that you either have the this or you don't, comparing it to what el of whatever else you're looking at. Because, um, you know, maybe if you, if you read the book and know what this is going on in this, you'd know why you'd definitely use one or you definitely wouldn't use the other because it depends on whether you're in this greater object um, like you were in the other, or you're using something that you have the object itself and you're outside of it. Um, but just in general, as a caution, just know that sometimes you use this arrow and sometimes you're going to use dollar this um, item arrow. Okay? So if there aren't any more questions, or yeah, go ahead. infinite and it won't you won't get out and that's that's one of the things that's really nice about the for each loop that you'll find in there and you'll find that a lot because um, Joomla is object-oriented and it sends in what it does is, is when it's sending multiple parts of information to a layout like you know you've got the blog and you've got all the different ones though by using the for each there you don't have to worry about um, adding your counter and getting caught in an infinite loop or anything like that. If it, um, so that's really nice to use that, where they're using that for each loop. Um, and you also want to be careful if you're just picking things to just kind of display out there, that there are certain things that, um, for security reasons, you, you might need to pre-filter and do some things with as well. Okay, all right, yes.
Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's kind of hard to see. It, it, it's a little, I think it's very uh, programmer related. Yeah. <laughs> I knew there have been some books that will sometimes um, give some of that information, but um, not really that I'm aware of. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's what, one thing that's kind of nice, of, well, that's getting into too technical, never mind. Okay, so I have, I have nine copies here, and there was another copy that was floating around somewhere. Mysteriously. Mysteriously. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody is interested in a free copy, I have ten of them, and I will grab a... Um, um, Yeah, why don't you do that? You do that. Thanks. And this doesn't specifically have Joomla in it at all, but it, what it is is it, you basically go from a static um, five-page website to sort of a mini um, CMS that you program using PHP and MySQL. So it gives you a lot of the basics. <laughs> and if you read it and you like it, feel free to do a review on Amazon or someplace. Everybody in? Okay. Reach inside. All right. Who claims this one? Um. <laughs> was that already in there? That was oh, that was part of my bag. <laughs> Robert. There's a Microsoft sofa. Yeah, I took that out. That I could tell. Jacques. Jacques. Yeah, I think so. GI? Wait a minute. Didn't you say you already knew PHP? <laughs> uh, Miguel? Sarab. Sarab. Yay. You can pick one if you want. I just can't get through. <laughs> okay, I got two that time. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks. And the other one I got when I picked there is uh, Sander. Oop. <laughs> Yes. Two more. Oh, look. <laughs> Red Web won one, too. <laughs> oh, is, there, is that a real one? Is that a real one? Yeah. Oh, I thought that Michael. was another. I Michael. thought that was another thing. <laughs> I thought that was more swag. <laughs> and one more. One more. One more. Make it count. Marika. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for coming.
Mm-hmm.